Today I'm going to be making a reaction to more Heritage Minute videos, 12 more videos today and I cannot wait to watch these. This has been one of my favourite series to make because with these videos I'm learning about so many different great things about Canada's past, so many interesting things. I've expanded on that with some other videos and looking into specific video topics in a bit more detail. But I just love watching these ones where I get to see like 12 different videos, all about a, a wide range of different things. And yeah, what I'm enjoying also is like reading your comments about the videos and learning more that way. So please tell me about these videos, leave your comments, I love to read them. And I've been trying to take some of your recommendations and put them into this video for what people suggested for, for videos to, for me to check out. And I also like as well how in the comments some people are saying they're actually learning things as well. They, they hadn't seen some of these videos so it feels amazing to learn together. Uh, that's, so yeah, that's why I've been enjoying this. So yeah, we've got 12 videos. So we're starting with this one. It's called Nelly McClung. I don't understand why women want to vote. Oh, really? The first time Nelly McClung saw the Premier about votes for women... Things are changing. Good day, sir. It didn't go too well for McClung. Take it from me, Mrs. McClung. Nice women don't want the vote. So then she staged a mock parliament attacking votes for men. Think what would happen if we actually allowed men to vote. Why, they would become obsessed with politics. Politics are like drinks. Once you start, if men started voting, families would be disrupted. Divorces would follow. Madam Speaker, take it from me. Nice men don't want the vote. After a long campaign, Manitoba's women became the first to get the provincial vote. Hey, Nice the next you, time they met, morning, in a polling gentlemen. station, it didn't go too well for the Premier. Premier Roblin, I'm sure you don't want your photograph taken with a woman who's not nice. <laughs> that was a great story. Another interesting story of a strong female in Canada's history, which watching these videos there seems to be many of them and I, I have enjoyed finding out about them so far. Can't wait to find out more, but Nelly McClung Obviously, this is what I believe during the suffragette movement and moment uh, in history. She was obviously one of the forerunners for trying to get women to vote in Canada. And she obviously achieved that. It's, it was like funny to see how she achieved or one of the methods she used with that uh, mock parliament uh, speech and things like that. It was very clever. Seems like a woman with good humour as well as a strong personality. And yeah, hearing it was in Manitoba as well, which... When I've learned about the different provinces of uh, Canada, Manitoba's one that always kind of gets left near the bottom of the list and stuff. So to see it had such an impact on Canadian history is quite interesting for me also uh, to learn about. Uh, next we've got, and tell me yeah, what you know about Nelly, what's, your, what's how she remembered in Canada. Uh, next we've got Winnipeg Falcons, 1920 Olympic Games. Wasn't easy growing up on Sargent Avenue. Bunch of Icelandic boys, nobody wanted around. But hockey was good to us. We're signing up then, George. <laughs> Only if Connie here joins up with us. <laughs> and the war came along. Broke up the team. But we were needed, and we went. It cost us. Too much, maybe. I don't know. But I do know one thing. We still got some fight left in us, right, boys? <laughs> it's the game we've been saving it for. For us. Yeah. Yeah. For Canada. Yeah. For the boys of Sergeant Africa. Yeah. The Winnipeg Falcons served Canada in the First World War. Two teammates never made it home. The rest went on to win the very first gold medal in Olympic hockey. Whoa, that's quite amazing. I never knew that. Obviously, I know how synonymous hockey is with uh, with Canada and how it's the most loved sport there as well. Uh, but to see these, this is kind of mixing two interests I have, sport and the military. And yeah, to hear these, these stories of the men who lost their lives, uh, but also the bravery of those, those players as well. Uh, it's just one of these interesting stories that can like have, can generate different emotions within me, happiness and sadness at the same time. Uh, but tell me again, yeah, how the Winnipeg Falcons are remembered. Uh, tell me more about that story as well. Uh, yeah, sad to hear those two men never made it back. Uh, next we've got Lucy Maud Montgomery. What do I like? 
I like open fires, moonlit nights, chatty letters, rainy days. I like daydreaming. I love this colorful little island of ruby, emerald, and sapphire. Yet often my dark moods come. I'm possessed body and soul by this depression. They say women shouldn't write. Some days I almost give up. But I cannot contain my imagination. I made Anne real. I gave her my love of nature, my love of books, and my childhood dreams. My greatest happiness would be to climb the alpine path and write upon it a woman's humble name. Lucy Maud Montgomery battled depression, rejection, and sexism to become known around the world for Anne of Green Gables and 19 other novels. Oh, another very strong woman in, in a different way. Obviously, she seemed to like battle her own personal uh, problems like with her depression. And yeah, I've just got to say, with the first three so far, the cinematography and production value of the videos has been really enjoyable. The last two look maybe a bit more modern and... Yeah, fantastic cinematography, really like enjoyable to look at, and that, that makes it very engrossing and really draws me into each story as well as the, the quality of the video. Uh, but this one, Lucy Maud Montgomery, as I said, she battled her own problems with her depression, but obviously at a time uh, which was similar to the first story where women were seen differently from men, like it's... We, we take it for granted these days in countries like Canada, UK, US, where women and men are treat, treated equally. But we don't have to look so far. It's not hundreds and hundreds of years ago. I mean, it's getting close to 200, but 100, 100 years ago, women were treated differently from men. They were treated like lower, lower than men. They didn't have the same opportunities here. We're saying that, that she shouldn't have been thought of as someone who should write. But she, she fought against that. She fought against her own demons. And she became like a successful, well-renowned author by the sounds of it as well, which is a great, great story. Uh, tell me if you knew much about her. Uh, next we've got Jack Plant. Another hockey one. It's never been done before. Mr. Blake. You can't see down with that thing. Mr. Blake. Jacques. What? They're coming. Hold them up. Find something. Jacques, I'm telling you for the last okay. time. Are the Canadians finished? His plan's coming back on the hey, ice. Come on, come on. Give us something, will you? Please, How God. many stitches? Gentlemen, please. Go. Go. Hey, tell me. On November 1st, 1959, Jacques Plant of the Montreal Canadiens broke with tradition. You're a brave man, Mr. Plant, standing up to him like that and changed the face of hockey forever. So was he the first goaltender to actually wear a mask? Was it is that where the mask part of the sport came into into play? That I mean the, I love the intensity of that video as well. You see him get hit and you can really feel that pain. Uh, you hear the crack noise it makes. Uh, but again, this is quite interesting that it's been two strong women and two hockey videos so far, but again, hockey is so synonymous and to see the foundations of the sport, see something that's so important to like player safety with this mask, when it came into effect to learn about that is also very interesting and you see someone like Jack Plant is obviously heroic because of that and it, you see in, in a microcosm like the, the mentality of hockey players and something I've learned about on my other channel uh, when I've been doing hockey reactions is the mentality of hockey players is so different from soccer players. When soccer players get hit, they stay down. When hockey players get hit, they try to get up as quickly as possible. And you can see that in Jack. He, he just wanted to get back out there and wearing the mask. He was able to do that. Uh, next we've got Sam Steele. Alaska, Holy Canada boundary. In his red coat all spit and polished. And he says, Where, Where would you be going? Well, I'm going to the Klondike to look at your gold fields, if there really is any. Not with this gambling gear and those revolvers. Men don't wear pistols in Canada. Canada be damned. I'm going to the Klondike. The Klondike is Canada. Pack those pistols in your saddlebags or get back to U.S. territory. 
I'm an American. You can't do this to me. In that case, I'll be lenient. We'll keep this gambling gear, and you'll be back in the United States by sundown. I... He never drew no gun. I could have shot that guy right there. Who was he, anyway? Superintendent Sam Steele of the Northwest Mounted Police. Why didn't I shoot him? Damn. In the days of the gold rush, a policeman, Sam Steele, became a legend of the Klondike. I don't know. Why didn't I shoot him? <laughs> well, man, again, it's like when you see these ones that are set so far in history, it just like really emphasizes how different the world is then to it is today, and it's like not even like hugely long. Like you see, this uh, this police officer had such responsibility, but this one is also looking at something else I've been delving a bit into recently, and that's the relationship between America and Canada and the differences between these two countries. You can almost see the difference in personality, the stereotypes of ca like Canadians and Americans. You see the guns already, things like that. But you see the strength of that man. He was like not phased. A man put guns in his face, which at that time might have been a bit more common, like these sort of things. It was a bit like less like regulated than it is today, if you want to say something like that. But you see the bravery, the calmness there. He stuck to his guns and was like, stick to the law. The, the American was a bit like going a bit crazy and stuff. But yeah, really interesting to hear the individual story of one of these mounted police really cool and uh, next we've got john mccray which sounds like kind of scottish actually scottish cigarette sir first world war major john mccray surgeon born and raised in guelph ontario poppies now blow between crosses roll on the road If you break faith, we shall not see Mr. McRae? In Flanders, fields. What is it? I'm not sure. John McRae of Montreal died in the war, but his poem is still spoken aloud when men, women, and children gather to remember. Wow, so again, an, a story of an individual and again related to military, which I've been learning about and there seems to be so many brave men and women in Canada's military history. Another example here, John McCrea, a surgeon who was out, out in the field, out in the front line that in itself shows that bravery and personality of the military professionals of Canada. Uh, but he created what I think they said like a poem there, which is still recited today. Uh, what did it say? In the fields of Flanders. So maybe I'll need to check that. I don't know if I've ever heard of that actually. Tell me if you know, know that, uh, that poem or piece of writing, if you've ever heard it. Uh, if you know of John McCrae as well. I feel, I feel like people have mentioned his name in the, the comments. That's why this one came up. But... Yeah, a very a very great story, man. I definitely need to check out that that poem and find out about it. And next, we've got boat people refugees off the shore of Malaysia. I, I live said in Malaysia. They had to leave home. The communists were going to take my father away. If my parents were afraid, they didn't show us. But we would never forget our escape from Vietnam. Jeez. We were lost. Children. Man. What was your job in Vietnam? University professor. We had no home. Do you have any family in Canada? No, sir. Nobody wanted us. Welcome to Canada. Canada chose us. Wow. Canadians open their borders, their homes, and their hearts to more than 100,000 refugees fleeing persecution after the Vietnam War. Mm, okay. We were home. I mean, that's just an interesting story for many reasons. Obviously, the Malaysia connection is for me because I live in Malaysia, so it's quite interesting to see there's been that link between Malaysia and Canada as well. Got to also talk about it's. It, 
it can you can look at it from the sort of immigrant refugee side of things as well where it just shows how long Canada has been such an open and welcoming country to immigrants uh, right up until today still in Canada is a country that really encourages people to move there and set up life and try and have a prosperous enjoyable life and I think that's what a lot of immigrants do have especially in a, a situation like this which we can also look at is it was the Vietnam War, which was between Vietnam and obviously Canada's neighbour, USA. But even though these were people coming from the the, 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 the point the area of war, which was their neighbour was there, uh, they still welcomed these people from Vietnam to come and uh, live there as well. And it's also about the immigrant life, man. You see the, the hardships these immigrants have had to go through, man. You see actually see they're jumping into the water. Again, this is another vivid picture painted from uh, Heritage Minutes and you can see the the, the uh, problems that these immigrants have had to go through and you see people living good lives today. I mean, it's a lot of it. Just for a one minute video, it had really a lot of good, interesting points to look at there. Uh, next we've got Rural Teacher. Children. You must understand, young woman, you work for us and not the other way around. I mean, that sounds Scottish. You would like to tell me how I must go about teaching the children to read. I've told you what it is we want you to do, and that's enough. Please, Mr. Clarence, would you take a look at this? You'll not bother me with that. Oh, but you see, sir, your son read this today. It is quite a difficult passage. It is from the Bible. This is what I use to teach him to read. Ah, uh, Mr. Clarence, why don't you just read it in? Both of you know I cannot read a word. Hmm. Throughout most of our history, millions of Canadians have owed their education to young women who taught in one-room schoolhouses, much like this one. Hmm. Well, that I mean, that's interesting. I think this is a painting. It had the, the artist and the name of the painting there, so maybe this... Heritage Minute is based around this painting and really bringing a painting to life. That, that is such an enjoyable concept to see. Like It really looks similar to that setting as well. But the, the sort of crux of this story, rural teacher, I think it was Prince Edward Island. So something that I've talked about before in with regards to the Canadian geography and the, the sheer size of Canada and how vast it is and how obviously we've looked at the quick where... 90% of Canadians live within a very close uh, proximity to the border, the US border, but there's all these very far away places that still have people living. So things like that, you don't really, not really thought about it myself, but yeah, getting teachers there to teach children because there's going to be children brought up there. It's a huge commitment from these young teachers, these young female teachers that said here this was celebrating. Uh, for them to go out to these remote places and really give their life to teaching young children and the hurdles they faced, like the population themselves and things. It, it's a very difficult thing and yeah, you've got to appreciate these people, man. These are like also heroes, uh, but in different ways. Uh, next we've got Avro Arrow. You know the story, when Avro. the RTAF said Mach 2 fighter, two place, thousand mile range, the British said it was impossible. The Yanks tried twice and failed. They said, you're dreaming. We said, fine, we'll build it right here in Toronto. And now you guys, my guys, are actually? saying that it can't be done, that they were right. Now that's the rocket that we used to get the model up to speed, and then the onboard sensor tells me. Come on, baby. Damn it! But we did it according to your specs. The specs have changed. We did it. Although the government cancelled the project and destroyed the prototypes, the Avro Arrow remains for Canada a world benchmark in aerospace achievement. Hmm. That's interesting. I've never heard that, the Avro Arrow. I mean, I have an interest in military, but I'm not, like, I, like hugely knowledgeable of all the different, like, uh, pieces of machinery and equipment and like aeroplanes and things like that so I've never actually heard of Avro Arrow before but it looks like it's maybe some sort of fighter jet that Canada created uh, which looked to be successful but they said there the 
stop production of it. I think. Well, what was the reason for that? And yeah, they say it still has a legacy in Canada, so it's still very well thought of and remembered. Tell me more about that. I'm quite intrigued about that to learn learn more about that story. Uh, but yeah, you see, another, it's just another part of Canada's military history. Uh, next, we've got Wilder Penfield. So, so, toast is burning. Toast is not. Whoa. Every time she has a seizure, she smells something burning. Now, if we can provoke that smell by probing the surface of the brain, we'll find the source of the seizures. Mrs. Cole, do you feel anything? I can see the most wonderful lights. And now what do you feel? Did you pour cold water on my hand, Dr. Penfield? Now what? Uh, what is it, Mrs. Gold? Burnt toast. Dr. Penfield, I can smell burnt toast. Mm. Dr. Wilder Penfield. He cured my seizures and hundreds more. They say he drew the roadmap of the human brain. We just called him the greatest Canadian alive. Whoa, the greatest Canadian alive? Is that how well thought he thought of he was at the time? That was I I seen a couple of people mention this video in the comments, and I can see why. I think some people mentioned the "I can smell toast" quote that that is very ingrained in their memory. But for me, if I watched this when I was young, it would probably like be that image of the brain being probed. It would stick in my mind and I wouldn't be able to forget that. It's very, a very vivid picture for for young people to, to look at, but that's what would make it memorable for me. And to re remember someone like Wilder Penfield, it's a great way. I mean, some of that, sh the, sh the way that was shot at the start with those choppy uh, cuts when she was like fainting, that was almost like Kubrick uh, style direction, man. Really enjoyable to watch, but... Uh, yeah, you just got to respect a hero like this man. Like, you see how almost rudimentary that looked like uh, compared to what's probably available for doctors to uh, do research today. But to research like that, really just touching the brain. He was obviously some sort of neuroscientist or neurosurgeon or something like that. And uh, you can see like he was obviously like the best at that man and probably has like a lot of great uh, findings and uh, yeah respect in that area so tell me more about his life man he seems like an interesting and very intelligent guy as well and uh, next we've got Richard Pierpoint when he was only 16 Richard Pierpoint was enslaved in Senegal and taken to America all us men have sworn on this petition to fight you're an old man the British Army has militias and trained soldiers. I fought with the British during the American Revolution. Take your land and farm it. Leave the Americans to us. With respect, sir. I was born a free man, and I intend to die one. Your officers fight for land and money. I fight for my freedom. Richard Pierpoint was one of thousands of black loyalists who won their freedom in the American Revolution. 30 years later, at the age of 68, he petitioned for an all-black unit that would defend Upper Canada during the War of 1812. Wow, that's a fantastic so story. I mean, we've looked at some uh, female heroes in Canada's past that you see this strong male character, man, and whoa, like, I mean, it's things like this. You, for me, like a Scottish guy who's been brought up in these times, it's so hard to transport myself back to the mentality that you would have to have as someone, a black man at that time, and the, to actually go there at such a, an old age with such a strong uh, will, with such strong willpower, and make that point and see what he wants and get it. Uh, it's yeah, it's really hard for me to like really fully appreciating what what people like this went through but watching now i can only i just get nothing but admiration uh, for their personality and again already so far we've watched so many different we've got watched some individuals in canada's history we've seen some great findings inventions it's been fantastic to learn about so far and uh, next we've got vimy ridge 
So we also laid out a full-size model of the ridge for the men to practice on. They know where every German strong point is, every machine gun, every bunker. General de Hurry, you do know the French have tried for the last year to take Vimy Ridge, yes? And that we also... Uh... I know, sir. What exactly makes you... Uh... Our guns will begin at dawn. My dear wife, this may be my last letter to you. We go into action in 20 minutes. It's the biggest thing I've ever been in. At precisely 0500, the men will move out of the tunnels, keeping precisely 300 yards behind the creeping barrage. Dear mother, as I looked to right and left, all I could see was Canadians. By 5 o'clock, Vimy Ridge was ours. And mother, I thought, we are a nation. This is us. It was the first significant victory of the war. That's fantastic. And yeah, that's the last video actually to watch today. But as with my other videos, I've really enjoyed learning about the Canadian military. And this one is, as much as we've watched some videos there about individuals with great histories and leaving amazing legacies, this was Canadian soldiers in general who are all heroes in their own right, every single person who put their life on the line and went to fighting, fighting these wars. Uh, yeah, again, as I always say, nothing but respect for them. And yeah, it's, it's such, the Canadian military is just so strong. Like someone has said on one of my previous videos, it's just because it's a smaller uh, military compared to some other countries, it doesn't get that respect, but the actual quality of it, of the fight of the soldiers and military itself is just fantastic, and we can see that in a lot of examples throughout history. I'm learning about so many different examples of that, and it's, I just feel privileged to do that. And as always, I absolutely love these videos. I love Canadian history, man. Who would have thought? I would never have thought, like before starting this channel, that I would have had such a, a like keen interest in Canadian history. But it's so interesting, and that ranges from the incidents. To the inventions, to the individuals throughout history in Canada. So much there to learn about and again some more uh, topics here for me to delve further into over the coming weeks and months. Tell me if there's any of these stories specifically that you'd love me to, or not love me, if you'd like me to look further into them. Tell me what you know about each of these. Uh, tell me if you what you know about the story of themselves, but tell me about your ex experiences watching these Heritage Minute videos when you were younger or in the past, tell me what you think about them, and recommend some other Heritage Minute videos for my future videos. Thank you.